welcome back to this game of ours. Tonight, we are going to be adventuring with a different party, same town, same story, just a different perspective. And uh, we're going to be doing quite a lot in order to uh, figure out what does Yerntide mean? What's going on with Briar's Vale? And generally, how are we even approaching this? Good to see you, Chungus. I'm, I'm happy to see you in chat here. Uh, joining me behind me is uh, one of the uh, players in both campaigns. This, uh, of course, being Skeelzy. Uh, if you want to say hi to the people, Skeelzy. Am I muted? Oh, I am. Hello. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So that way it's a little bit uh, easier to hear. Um, so last time we had a little bit of a uh, dramatic homeroom. And we had a bit of a introduction to Briar's Vale, and I hope to flesh out a little more of what's going on in this town. Just a little. Just a little. In the meantime, let's go ahead and check in with our players today. So... Um, bam. There we go. <laughs> and let me unmute myself on Discord. Hey, everyone. How you doing? All right. Doing good. Doing good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I am glad to hear that. Um, is everyone, can everyone hear me clearly? Is everyone able to hear stuff pretty nicely? Yes. Yep. Good and clear. Good and clear. I like to hear that. I love to hear that. All right. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'll read you a little bit of the opening scene here. On the western edge of Briar's Vale lies Saguaro Point, a neighborhood away from the churning din of the factory of Cornerstone Industries. And Saguaro Point, at the intersection of Mesa Boulevard and Burning Bush, is an old, warped street light. The pole is pockmarked with rust and the light itself struggles to fulfill its purpose, blinking intermittently. The adults know it to be the landmark that delimits the path out of town to US-139, to places without sharp edges. But some children who stray too long on the western side of Clare Cook know it to be something entirely different. They know it to be the place they go when they dream. The dream is always the same. The street light, the sound of distant trains. The street light is ever so slightly closer. The urging forward as if pulled by a rope tied around your stomach. The street light is closer, emerging from behind the street light against all intuited rules of physics is the woman. The street light is closer. The woman is wearing a drab brown dress, high neckline hemmed like a noose around her collarbones. The street light is closer. Her face is serene and sad, even as it twists and distorts, flowing like a whirlpool tide with black sunken eyes that draw you in closer. She reaches out her hand and a too familiar feeling spreads throughout your chest. A longing to be lonely. A certainty of rejection. A yearning for the closure of isolation where all equations are finally solved and the suspense of ambiguity is finally torn away like a curtain or a patch of skin. She speaks in whispers that caress your neck and smother your breathing. Would you like to know the geometry of truth? Then a flash, a sound, a series of images, a sense of immense distance. No one remembers the details of what comes after the flash. By the time you all arrive at Midwich Junior High to start your school day, it becomes a hazy feeling of unease that pulls at the mind. And as long as you stayed away from the western banks of the Clare Cook long enough, it would fade. 
but some things don't fade fast enough, and the remnant of what was left becomes a thorn in the heart. We begin your school day with history class. In walks as you're filing into your seventh period, in walks who you know to be Mrs. Flanagan. Mrs. Flanagan is a tall, uh, somewhat stout uh, woman who is wearing a plaid blazer, uh, dress slacks, as well as a, a very garish scarf. She has her hair kind of bound up in this sort of uh, bun deal. It's not sure if it's a loose bun or a tight-fitting bun. It's sort of all over the place. It's just pure chaos. And she comes to the front of the class as you're all sitting down. And she goes, hello, hello, hello. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. Welcome back to history class. It is so good to see you. You are, again, very lucky to have me, Mrs. Flanagan, uh, here to go into local history. Because today, right at the end of the school day here, we're going to be going on a little field trip. And I am very excited, but I want to make sure we have an accurate headcount. I already got all of your slips. You don't need to worry about that. But I want to get an accurate headcount. Um, let's see. I want to make sure. So we have Dolores. Dolores, you're here? Yes? Good. Here, Mrs. Neff. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we also have James, my rebel without a cause. Are you here? Jimmy? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, excellent. I'm, I am so glad. I am so glad you're here. You, you make my heart very, very happy to see you. And then Ellie, you here? I'm here. Good, good, good. And let's see. Ba ba ba. And oh yeah, so yes. Um Sycamorely, if you want to say your character's name real quick. Yeah, I'm Jack Frey. Jack. Jack, Jack, thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm having one of those days. I haven't had my coffee and I had to listen listen to Mr. Forsyth just drone on and on and on. And I swear nothing interesting happens in that man's life. I'm fairly convinced of that. Well, it might say something else on your roll call, but. <laughs> Jack. Jack. Okay. That's fine. That's good. That's perfectly fine. So. All right. Good, 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 good. So we have Jack, Dell, Jimmy. We're going to, and of course the rest of you, she goes through the rest of the attendance rule. I would like you to file calmly, calmly from your seats and we'll go meet over at bus number 11A, okay? Can you do that? Okay, great. And the folks begin. Going? We are going to, it was kind of a surprise, but you know, I'll tell you now, I'll tell you now. We're going to one of the most historical buildings in the entire town. Uh, it's a little place, uh, sometimes known as the Rhodes Mansion, uh, but you all might know it by the more flowery poetic name of Solitude's Rest. I'm pretty excited about it. How about you? Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, uh, Naomi, at least act like you're excited a little. I mean, okay, that's fine. All right. Do you. Okay. So, you all head into the bus, and the drive is a fairly quick one. Uh, the road to the, it's about not even like two miles away. You begin to wonder why you even bothered with the bus. You could have walked, but, you know, two miles is two miles, and you got the brief respite of looking out the window, however you do. And when you arrive at the, at the uh, Rhodes Mansion, it is imposing, a Victorian kind of monstrosity on the banks. It's extremely pretty from a certain angle, but
but you notice that there's quite a bit of decay, quite a bit of rot around the siding. It's not been kept up well on the outside. And there's a little sign that says, uh, that indicates a historical property. And it says that uh, construction and remodeling are ongoing. All right. Now, you might be wondering, why are we at one of the creepiest houses in the entire town? And I'll tell you. It's because I want to scare the living hell out of you. No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> that, is, that is not why. That's not why. That was a joke. Please don't call your parents. Thank you. Uh, go in? Hmm? Are we going to get to go in? We are going to go in once uh, Mr. Rhodes himself, Melvin Rhodes, the proprietor and sole heir of the house, uh, once he meets us here. But I figure I'd take this time to tell you a little bit about the history, a little bit. And he can tell you the rest. So this was built by Sylvia Rhodes. Sylvia Rhodes was one of the people who founded, or at least helped found, Vermilion Oils, you know, the primary, uh, the primary uh, economic force on this side of the river. We're not going to be talking about Cornerstone Industries today. Um, but I think her story is a really lovely and tragic one because she helped all of her friends basically create this company out of nothing. It just kind of sprang up. And she kept on helping and kept on helping. And then finally, when it was ready to launch, they, well, and at this point, you see a car roar up. Oh, that's Mr. Rhodes himself. It's a very nice car. It's like uh, an old luxury car. Not necessarily any kind of like Rolls Royce or anything like that. But it's a very nice Lincoln. You know, it's coming up sort of a black Lincoln driving up and out of this, uh, once it's parked and out of this car comes this very old, uh, almost genteel man wearing a bow tie and a uh, button up shirt. He comes out of the car. He says, hello, I'm Melvin Rhodes. And it's so nice to see all of you taking an interest in Briar's Vale history. I am quite pleased at it, in fact. Won't you come in? I'll be your tour guide. Uh, Mrs. Flanagan, is it? Yes? Yes. I uh, would appreciate it if uh, you'd lead these intrepid students in. And slowly, one by one, you go into the house. So... As you go into the house, it has that lovely, and by lovely I mean somewhat musty odor, as if, you know, it's been cleaned recently, but there's still a trace of mold, a, uh, a sense of, I don't know, the air is too thick to breathe, there's the smell of dust, and overall the smell of something long-faded like jasmine left in a cupboard. So, the Melvin go, goes up to uh, the living room. Hello, you've, uh, this is the vestibule, the receiving room. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about, well, my family. I'm not sure if Mrs. Flanagan has already, uh, Explained it. Actually, Mrs. Flanagan, if you could do me a favor, if you could go over to the office and get the handouts, that would be absolutely lovely. Oh, yes, of course. And then Mrs. Flanagan walks out of the living room to the right, over to where an office is. Or at least what you presume to be an office. So, my great 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 grandmother founded Vermilion Oils. And yes, the rumors are true. She also died on the property. I suppose there's a lot of gossip about that, a lot of urban legend. But, on the other hand, the truth is far more mundane. It is not a tale of supernatural goings-on, but instead a business deal gone sour. She had helped found the place, 
And as we tour, I'll go ahead and tell you all about how she was betrayed by the very people she was helping. To the point where, well... Can I ask a question? Yes. Is this going to be on the test? Uh, I'm not your teacher, but I can certainly tell you that you should be paying attention because it's important local information. And, and at this point, you hear what sounds like a woman screaming from where you presumed the office was. You think it might be Miss Flanagan. Melvin looks over. Oh dear. I wonder what that was. And you all file over there. Over to the right, past the archway that frames the passage from the vestibule and living room to what looks like a, a small office that's kind of tucked away into the corner. It is filled with papers, a computer, and on the ground, Miss Flanagan. Oh. Oh dear. It's already begun. Um, well, I mean, there's a sense of, well, I'll explain in a minute. I need to go call someone. I need to, uh, use the phone. Call Unfortunately, the police, right? I'm sorry? You're going to call the police, right? Oh, I'm going to call an ambulance. Yes. Okay. So... Unfortunately, the office phone is uh, ever so slightly noisy, so I'm going to be going over to uh, the second floor phone. I'll be right back. Do not move. And he leaves the room. And you hear no footsteps going up the second floor. You just are alone in a paper-strewn office in an old house with your teacher seemingly passed out on the floor. What do you do? I kneel down and shake her arm a little bit, try to see if she can wake up. She's a very floppy, like dead weight. She's non-responsive. Well, that's not good. Are we sure this phone doesn't work? So, uh, first Jack and then Jimmy, what was your question, Jack? Second one. Oh, are we sure the phone doesn't work? Um, you can go ahead and try. Yeah, I'm going to try the phone. Okay. You pick up the phone and you hear. Oh, oh good. <laughs> not even a dial tone. But no voices? No voices. Something's not, not right with that calling. phone. I'm sorry? So he's not actually calling. Yes, that's correct. And what was that second, Marley? Something's not right with this phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did say it was malfunctioning. What do you, how do you know someone's not calling? I'm, I mean, it's the same phone line, I would think. Oh, yeah, I guess Hi. maybe. That's smart. I'm going to search the desk. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll me an assess. Anyone else want to do something here? I'll sneak out and look outside in the hallway, see if there's anything out there. All right, as you're sneaking out into the hallway, you notice that most of the dust towards the stairwell, the cobwebs, all of it, is pretty thick. It's um, pretty layered. Uh, the cobwebs are actually uh, swooping down from the ceiling to the banister. Six. Uh, what was that? Six for assess. 
Oh, sex for a sass? Okay. So as you're searching the desk, you find in the desk a small black envelope. But it seems to be empty. It doesn't have anything in it. It's just stationary. Jess, what do you do as you're searching around? Start looking around at everything, and I notice that, uh, well, he's not upstairs, so I want to see if he is somewhere downstairs. Okay. Do I see any sign of him? Okay. As you're going through the kitchen and the hallways, you notice that there's a lot of portraits of folks who look a lot like the old man. Uh, there's empty vases filled with dead roots. And you find that um, with as you're going down the hallway, there's a bunch of off rooms. There's a, a bedroom or two that, again, it's just primarily... Uh, dust and cobwebs and old antiques. There's uh, a room with a, a extremely alarming uh, doll that's just sitting in a rocking chair. It uh, looks a lot like uh, sort of like what if you took a Cabbage Patch Kid and uh, fused it with uh, an American girl doll and then elongated it a little bit too much so that way the torso was just a little bit too long. Um, so, yeah. The bad Ben baby? It is not the bad Ben baby. Are you sure? I don't I... trust you. <laughs> it is not the potato baby, I promise. <laughs> so, you continue on over to the kitchen, and in the kitchen you see there's a door that's swung open leading with stairs down, down into the bowels of the house. Oh, don't like that. All right. Jack, Jimmy, what do you do? I'm looking for hidden doorways. Looking for just straight up hidden doorways. I love it. Perfect. Uh, Jack, if you could, or not Jack, uh, Jimmy, if you could roll me, um, Either uh, study or assess. What do you want to do to look for hidden doorways? Assess. Sorry. Okay. The fridge are in your That's fine. <laughs> and so you'll go ahead and roll however many di uh, dice you have. Your D6. Uh, yeah, two. Two? Okay, great. Uh, hang on. Light's dark. Can't read my dice. I'm getting old. Five. Five. Okay. You're searching along the walls, and your hands are you're, you're kind of gently knocking. And as you're knocking, you're going around the office looking for some kind of lever, and something catches your ear. There's Miss Flanagan on the floor, and she's slowly muttering, the tide, the dust, the fire, the moons, the tide, the dust, the fire, the moons. And as she's whispering this, you notice, too, that there's a lot like a long kind of like her words are being echoed into a cave as she's laying face down on the floor. Like there's something very large underneath the ground floor. Okay, that's weird. Mm hmm. Super weird. Is there anything else in the desk? Um, the other things that you find in the desk, there is a. A small jewelry box. Um, it seems to be great. It's adorned uh, porcelain. 
It's painted porcelain uh, with red and purple arabesques on it. And uh, in the center is a swan. Um, it doesn't appear to be locked, but when you open up the jewelry box, there's nothing in it. But it looks like an indentation for a necklace. How big is it? It's about yay big, like a, like a six-inch Subway sandwich. Can I pocket it without anyone noticing? Um... I'm going to say, uh, who's in the room? Jack, are you still in the room? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Jack, Jack will notice, um, but the other two won't. Um, and the rest of the students at this point are too frozen and they're starting to get a little panicky. Okay. Um, I'm going to pocket it and then I'm going to go look for Del. Okay. Ooh, sorry about the Bonus. feedback there. Oh. That was just feedback. <clears throat> What do I notice? So, uh, the thing that you notice was that um, Ellie actually has pocketed a six-inch jewelry box that's very oh. ornate. Yep, okay. And, yeah. and the other thing that you're noticing is that the other kids are starting to get very panicky. Hmm. Interesting. So. At this point. At this point, Dell. Do you decide to go down the stairs? Getting a bad feeling and I'm not stupid enough to go down into a. Not knowing what happens basement. Um, <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will go back to the room, but my eye will catch on the doll again, and I want to um, assess the doll. Okay. Go ahead and uh, roll for that. Test. All right. Yep. I rolled a two. And... You rolled a two? Yeah. Great. Perfect. Um, so with, as you, as you, uh, scan over the doll, you're pretty sure it's in the same position. You're fairly sure of that. Um, but you do notice that the cobwebs have obscured the doll in a much more thicker way than expected. And they basically... There's some kind of trick of the light. It looks like the doll is smiling where it wasn't before. I love that for us. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> is that what, do you say that? Yes. The doll just keeps sitting there and staring back. At this point, you hear something from upstairs. It sounds like a, not necessarily a bang, but like someone hopping out of bed. Really heavy footsteps. Ellie's gonna hide. All right. Um, where do you where do you want to hide, Ellie? Uh, well, I'd gone to look for Del, uh, so I'm assuming that I would have run into her at some point throughout this, um, and honestly, oh, what is happening, what is doing? It's the headphones, here, let me, let me turn you down a bit. Okay, um, honestly, big creepy basement sounds like a great place to hide, and also this dude doesn't have a head count for us. That's very true, that's very true. So, you're gonna go hide in the basement? Hell yeah, I am. Okay. Cool. And also move <laughs> here, I guess. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Del, you see Ellie book it to the basement. Do you want to do anything? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the main group. Okay. 
Okay, so you're just going to let Ellie hide? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Jimmy and Jack, you see Del come in while you're hearing from upstairs. The children uh, of your class are starting to get really panicky, and they're starting to run for the exit. I'm moving away from the door to the hall. Okay. So you're moving away from the door to the hall. Jack? I do not want to be in the path of that. Okay. Sounds good. Jack, what do you think? I asked Del, where did Ellie go? Uh, I saw them run towards the basement. I didn't follow them, though, but now I'm sort of second-guessing that. Yeah, I think that sounds good. You want to go? Yeah, now. And runs out the door. <laughs> I follow. Okay. All right. Uh, Jimmy, you see uh, Dell and Jack book it uh, back down the hallway over to what appears to be a kitchen. Okay. Well, after everyone else has left the room, including all of the screaming children, I'm just going to saunter towards the kitchen, wherever they are. Okay. Um, as... Uh, I'm going to say, Dell and Jack, you're going to make it into the kitchen. As you're making it to the hallway with the stairway banister, um, you look up and there's Melvin Rhodes, the tour guide. And he... And you're alone. Oh, good. <laughs> and he looks at you and he goes, I wouldn't worry about well your teacher she's in good hands authorities are on their way I can continue the tour though it seems many of you have left but that's all right isn't it, Jimmy? You don't remember telling him your name. I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> the what's are on the way? Authorities to help with Mrs. Flanagan. I run off towards the kitchen. Oh, uh, he doesn't try to stop you, but he's he's walking extremely stiffly like he's almost like something invisible is perp walking him down the stairs to the point where it's his footsteps that are going. And he doesn't really try to chase you or anything. He just kind of lets you go and sort of smiles at you as you run to the kitchen. Smiles at me. Yes. It's a it's a nice smile. Like you do. Um <laughs> Ellie. You run down the basement. It's extremely dark and extreme it's, the smell of dampness is almost overwhelming. Um <laughs> There is a single light uh, switch, one of those old pull cords, pull chains, um, that uh, is basically treating it like uh, you are, well, for the most part, alone in the dark. I'm not going to pull the string. You're not going to pull the string? No, um, but I left the, the door at the top of the stairs cracked. I'm assuming there's a little bit of light. There is a little bit of light. That is correct. Um, can I see anywhere to sort of like duck in and hide? Do I notice anything? Like, can I roll assessor, study or shepherds? What you notice is there is a large um, wardrobe, in fact, that is tucked away in the corner behind an old lamp and a, and one of those ancient uh, stereos. Uh, that is about 4,500 pounds. <laughs> you know, okay. one of those stereo hi-fis. Just call me Susan because we're going to fucking Narnia. Okay. So you quickly clamber over the large wooden stereo 
and climb inside the wardrobe. So, Jimmy, Dell, Jack, um, as you're running down the kitchen, you see you you uh, see the basement door is open, and you hear the sounds of someone clambering, and then eventually a big wooden thunk. What do you want to do? Uh, check for anything useful in the kitchen before we go down. Okay. In the kitchen, you find a, a variety of utensils, in fact. Um, there's an entire china set. There's a lot of... Uh, in the kitchen, there's also quite a bit of forks, spoons, and... Uh, oh, over there is a nice knife block. There are about uh, seven different kinds of knives in there. Do you want to assess further? Yes, and are there windows in the kitchen? There are windows in the kitchen. Um, they seem to be painted, the, they're casement windows, but they've been painted over. Uh, so they're really difficult to open. Um, the fridge seems to be mostly empty, though you do find a small box that says Melvin on it. Um, at this point, though, you do notice to your right, you're starting to hear... And you look over, and there's Melvin, peacefully smiling, slowly coming toward you in the kitchen. Do we have our backpacks? Uh, you do have your backpacks. I'm getting out my smallest flashlight, the one with the special red filter I sent off for. Ooh, fancy. Okay, what do you want to do with it? Well, I'm assuming that we're going to go down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So I want to shine a little light, but not too much light. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I just didn't know if I had it with me. Ah, well, good thing you do. Um, okay, so uh, Jack and Del, you see uh, Jimmy reach into their backpack, frantically look around, and then, oh, look, there's a really nice sort of small flashlight that's intense, but it's not too intense. It's very uh, sort of a narrow beam um and you also notice that uh, melvin is still clomping down the hall toward the kitchen i scoff aloud <laughs> i snag the mailbox from the fridge and just run down the stairs okay uh and what was that jack what do you do I scoff and pull out my big ass flashlight. Oh, okay. Big ass flashlight. Just. <laughs> All right. So much for sneaking. <laughs> Can I sort of um, fumble around? Ellie already went down there, so there's not sneaking anywhere. I mean, you know, having having a good light source. As you all are running down the basement stairs and getting ready to not die because you're you're running down a dark place and you have flashlights, thankfully. Um. As you're fumbling down the wardrobe, Ellie, you feel what might be described as spidery yet crumbling fingers on your neck. And then all of a sudden it's gone. It was just for a moment. It was like someone was touching your neck, but then it's gone. Rifling through pockets, I am looking for canes. There might be a sword in one of them. I don't know. I need a, something to hit something with. <laughs> Pocket knife, something. In the wardrobe, you hear the clamber of many feet coming down the stairs. I redouble my efforts. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to that. You all are now downstairs. As you reach the bottom of the stairs, you hear. Melvin, go, oh, well, 
I suppose. I suppose she could have you. That's fine. And then he closes the basement door. And you hear the fumbling of metal. And then finally, nothing. He's just, from what you can tell in the shadow, he's just standing in front of the door, doing nothing. What do you do? I'm gonna pan my flashlight all around the room, see what I see. Okay. As you're panning your flashlight around the room, you see it's mainly detritus. But there's a pathway through all the detritus. There's an old piano. There's a stereo from the 40s that looks like it might as well be a large piece of wooden furniture. There's a wardrobe that seems to be rocking back and forth a little bit uh, behind the stereo. Uh, There's a bunch of old clothes. There's a billiard table right next to, um, over to your right, away from the wardrobe. But past the billiard table, the room becomes somewhat cleaner. The detritus starts to ease up and it begins to look like an old salon, a a sort of smoking room where you might imagine people with uh, fancy jackets and long cigars have uh, bougie conversations. Past that, there's a door. I should go check for it. Uh, what'd What'd you say, Jimmy? I said, I bet there's an exit back that way. I'm going to go check it out. Erica, okay. So you're going to go check it out. Um, Ellie, you, you managed to find, as you're scrounging and scrounging, it's almost like you kind of stumble into a, what looks like an old cane, but it's seg- it's one of those segmented canes. Did uh, I just find a threaded cane? Well, it's not like threaded like Bloodborne, but like, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like a a collapsible cane. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and it has a a really nice uh, sort of round glass bauble at the end. It's purple. I uh, will take it. Am I pretty sure that there's nothing else of use in the wardrobe? Uh, pretty sure, except for old clothes, creepy feelings, and um, <laughs> just a general sense of unease because upstairs there was a clompy man and now the door is closed. Is it locked? Is it unlocked? Who knows? But he's just standing there. And uh, yeah. Ellie wouldn't necessarily know that. That's was true. Was she a complete ding dong and didn't pay attention to whether anyone came down the stairs? Uh, she did hear people come coming down the stairs. But. Um, I'm gonna very carefully and quietly. Yeah. But since I didn't blow my night vision, um, uh, peek out the wardrobe to see. You see the uh, vague outlines of what looks like there's Dell near the stairs. There's Jack panning a flashlight around and looking. And you see Jimmy heading off deeper into the basement towards what looks like a kind of a lounge or smoking room with a door at the end. But nothing adult sized. Uh, nothing adult sized that you can see. I'm going to carefully and quietly climb out and then just sort of wave. All right. Just sort of get, get their attention. The wardrobe has opened and you see a small shape waving at you. Oh, God, I'm so glad that was you. I didn't know why that wardrobe is moving around. She's what did you f- she's whispering. Um, it was just me. Um, who was that? That creepy guy. But but he went up so quiet. He didn't go upstairs like there was nothing going up those stairs. He didn't go upstairs. What was what was on the second floor? Well, I don't know. I'm not stupid enough to follow. <laughs> are there are there windows in this basement? 
Uh, not in this section that you can see. Okay. Um, guys, should we follow Jimmy? I don't think, I don't think it's a good idea to be alone down here. I felt some, something touched my neck when I was in there, and I don't think it was a coat. Spiders? It felt kind of spidery, but it felt like hands. Oh. I don't know if we have hand-sized spiders around here. It is uh, Colorado, uh, the sort of near four corners of Colorado, uh, Utah, and the other ones. (laughs) (laughs) Additional assorted states. Jack would know the name of some large spider and would hypothesize that perhaps that is what Ellie felt. Okay. I still don't think it's a good idea for Jimmy to be able to. Yeah, all right. Let's go after him. Okay. So, Jimmy, you are now suddenly joined by three of your classmates, Ellie, Dell, and Jack. They are right behind you as you're coming into the, the smoking room lounge place in the basement. Oh, you finally caught up with me. You're not that fast. I was looking for exits. In front of you is a door uh, that appears to be pretty solid. Um, It is... uh, There's a couple of bar locks, like a a sliding lock on it. Um, It doesn't... The door handle doesn't appear to have a keyhole. Ellie's gonna listen. Well, I'm gonna to try to open the door. Okay. Wait. 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 Ellie sort of creeps up to the uh, window, or sorry, door, and uh, listens. All right. Uh, go ahead. Actually, let's make this a teamwork thing. All of you roll assess. I have a six. Okay. I have a five. All right. Three. What, what'd you get, second, Marley? Three. Three? Okay. Uh, four for me. Okay, cool. So, Jimmy, you... What you hear from... From the other side is something a little odd where it's just, well, this noise. And then suddenly, it stops. Hopefully you all heard that over Discord. If you didn't, I can verbally describe it. (laughs) Oh, I heard. I heard, but I couldn't make out if, if there were words. Uh, there are, it, it's too overlapped. It's hard to, to hear. Is Jimmy the only one that heard? Uh, you all hear something a lot like this. Here, one sec. Let me go ahead and open that back up. It's a little more calm. Okay, guys. Are we going in? Because I have this. Damn it. I have this weird sense that we should knock first. Can't hurt. Do we want to go? What do y'all think? Should I knock once or twice? (laughs) Ellie reaches out and gently knocks on it twice. Okay. So, it's a very curtly knock. Nothing too hard. And the door itself the slide locks that are on your side 
seemingly of their own volition, begin to slide back, unlocking the door. The door opens, and at first, it's just darkness, but you still hear it. Does the flashlight penetrate the darkness at all? You see in the center a chair. On the chair, sitting there silently, is a woman. This woman is wearing a brown drab dress. with this very high hemmed neckline and her face is serene yet sad but twisting and flowing like water her eyes do not stay where they should her mouth undulates from eye to chin Ellie slams the door and bolts it The whispering stops. Do do I rec- do we recognize her? You have a vague sense that you might have seen her before in a dream. But that's about it. There's this a large sense of panic though. <laughs> and it makes you want to do that. <laughs> I just coughed. <laughs> <laughs> so Ellie's gonna make sure every Someone... single one of those bolts are shut and then start looking for furniture to pile up in front of that, that door. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you do? Well, so much for the easy way out. So I'm going to start looking for other exits from this place. Okay. All right. Um, Del, what do you do? Um, question. Can I use shivers to get an idea of um, how dangerous that thing is? Of course you can. That would be a great idea. All right, let's do that. Yeah. That is, that is, yeah, that is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just roll one dice. Uh, however many dots you have. Okay, so we will roll. I got a two, but I have two dots in shivers. Okay, so you got a two, uh, you roll two dice, so roll one more. Okay. And then two again. Oh, Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was, like, how does that, like, I'm sorry. It's okay. You're out of game. Out of game. So yeah. I can get an idea. Um, Sh- sure. So how did that work? I have two dots mm. shivers. Yes. And I rolled two. Um, you roll two, two dice, and then you take the highest result, and that is your result. Okay. And I can't add the, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. Yeah. Del, <laughs> so what are you doing? <clears throat> So, Del, what you, what you feel is that whatever is happening in that room has to be some kind of weird school prank. This isn't dangerous. What this is, is an irritating. You were supposed to be home. Y'all could have been doing whatever you're going to be doing. But now there's some weird old guy at the top of the stairs threateningly clomping around. You're in a dank basement. And now you got to deal with this bullshit? God. (laughs) So, that's kind of where you're at. May I also shiver? (laughs) You can also shiver. That's actually why Ellie was going to ask what Tal was doing. Should I roll too? If you want. It's up to you. Oh, can I help? I can I help? Um, can I help? Um, 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 Jack. Uh, you can try again. Sure. I mean, no. If um, Jack's doing the shiver thing, um. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to rewind and and try try it with with Jack instead? No, they can just do it a second time. Okay. We'll have both. Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and do that. So uh, I roll two dice. Yep. Uh, go ahead and roll two dice, and then uh. 
Uh, Del, go ahead and roll your shiver one more time. And Ellie, did you roll five. shiver? Yeah. Okay. Five. You got a five? Okay, I'll come back to you. Go ahead. Um, wait, so I have one dot. So I is Ellie, uh, sorry, is um, Del somehow helping me yes. roll more? Okay. Yes. So then I got a four because otherwise I was going to get a two. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I got a five this time. Hey. All right. Pranks all around. No. <laughs> so, uh, what you feel after that initial feeling of just like, this is the worst prank ever. What you now feel is, no, this isn't a prank because that face thing sure was that who does what? That's too much special effects for that. No, no. Uh, this is legitimately just frightening and dangerous. Um, and Ellie, you get the sense that you all are extremely in danger. My name is Ralph Wiggum, and I'm in danger. <laughs> so that is the sense. Like that thing definitely should stay behind that door. That is the sense you get. Ellie's got a real quick, quick roll and assess and see if I can think of anywhere else in the basement or see anything else in the basement that might have some kind of exit. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, uh, you're also looking, so I'm going to go ahead and say you both help each other, right? Yep. Yes. Cool. Uh, go ahead, both of you, uh, roll assess. I have a six. Damn. Jimmy's just killing it. Jimmy's just like, okay, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> yeah, this is in no way I can play, but I keep fives and a cool dad. <laughs> okay, cool. So in almost no time at all, the two of you work together as you're scouring the basement, and you discover that past a lot of that junk is, in fact, an external basement access door. That leads to the backyard. It's, it's going to take probably all of you to get all of that detritus out. If it's leading to the ground, there would be stairs. Is, it, or is the detritus blocking? The detritus the is, blo the is, is uh, blocking the mouth of the stairway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not me sitting there thinking I could maybe make a ramp and throw shit. <laughs> so. Do what do you what do you all want to do here? You've discovered a uh, possible exit that goes to the backyard, but it's blocked by a bunch of detritus. But working together, you could probably get rid of it. I mean, I would love to shift some of that de uh, detritus from that door to Spoopy Lady's door. That sounds like a great plan. Okay, what what are the rest of you think? Okay. I'm fine with that. Let's get started. Yeah, very much so. But uh, how close is Mr. Rhodes? Like, let's do a check on that. You haven't heard much of, uh, he's, uh, he's, you still see two leg shadows beneath the door. Can, are there any, like, cans or, like, bells or just something like, rattly down there that we could, like, put on those stairs so we could hear, like, really easily if, if, if that changes? Uh, you do manage to find a couple bottles, glass bottles, like old soda bottles. Oh, I am absolutely breaking those on those stairs. Damn. Okay. Heck that guy. <laughs> All right. Heck that man's whole life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh. So I say, yeah. can I save one from Ellie and put it right at the right against the door. Is wait? Does the door open in or out? It opens in. Okay. I put it right up against the door so that if it opens, it's gonna fall down the stairs. Okay. We do like some Home Alone stuff and put some of like the pool balls down there too. See if you trip them up. <laughs> You can. There's nothing stopping you. There are. There is a seven ball, a four ball, and weirdly a uh, a thirteen ball. All right, pocket the thirteen and then put the rest away, or put them by the stairs. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, hold on. I gotta. I gotta shift the camera here. There we go. Uh, I'm enjoying this too much. <laughs> as co-DM, I feel underinformed. 
<laughs> it's all good. So, um, so you go ahead. You set up the Coke bottle trap. Uh, you set up your uh, after uh, the pool balls are placed. Ellie goes and just goes on a glass rampage on the stairs. Um, <clears throat> the stairs are now pretty well covered. Uh, in in a variety of hazards. <laughs> Uh, we do not need the pool balls to unlock the door now. Um, <laughs> um, okay, and then you get uh, started uh, moving the furniture. Uh, Jimmy's taking lead because Jimmy's pretty beefy. Uh, and the rest of you are definitely helping. Um, Ellie's struggle busting because she's tiny. <laughs> tiny. Um, as As the... Uh, there's a large office desk that you're moving uh, in front. And as you cl- just sort of plop it in front of the locked door, you uh, hear the door from upstairs creak open and the Coke bottle crash. And then you hear the voice of Melvin. Your kids better not be causing trouble for a lady. Uh, how how clear is the stairs? Can we like uh climb over that some bitch and break the door? Like, I got I, I got messed with. I can mess with it. So, <laughs> we're gonna introduce a mechanic. I'm excited. I would like to leave. <laughs> So did he wait wait just uh-huh. did he say lady? Uh-huh. He sure did. Okay, okay, just So if you look on stream or on my uh actually I'll turn on my camera for Discord here. There you go. You can see there's a a little uh pie chart right above the word urine tide. Can you all see that clearly? Yes. Cool. Yes, and I hate it. This is called a progress clock. A progress clock is a measure of time through which a project or event is completed. They can also function as a timer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mix. Good to see you. So, what I need you all to do is go ahead. Um, what do you? What are you all using, uh, uh, skill wise? What do you want to use with your with your body or your mind to help you move all of this to, uh, furniture detritus? The what remains. And you can choose a skill, um, and you can even if it's like your uh, best skill, and you like it's something like study. Um, we can we can work with that. Um, so I'll let you. I'll give you a chance, and I'm gonna just uh, catch up with chat. Mix lip. I am so glad you're here. We are finally playing this game of ours. I am super super excited. Uh, this game of ours is the RPG that uh, I created, and my very very good friends here are partaking in. And right now, they're trapped. They are kids trapped in a basement on a field trip by a very creepy tour guide and they're trying to find their way out. And the tour guide has just opened the door and is about to descend. All shivers all the time. Let's go. All right. So you're going to use shivers? Yes. To help? Yes. Okay. Jimmy, how about you? Assess. All right. So you're looking at the grip points of the of the furniture. You're looking for that perfect leverage point so that way you can grip it without hurting yourself and also getting it as quickly as possible. Uh Dell, what do you think? Um okay, uh, I think I'm going to go with mess with. Mess with. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, mess with um the way you're, uh, the, what you're doing, rather than looking for grip points, you're, lo- you're just breaking this stuff apart as much as you can. 
uh, you're just like going, okay, you know what? We're just going to bend this leg or we're just going to rip this off. We need to get this out. Uh, Jack, how about you? This seems like a good time for Wire Jack to perform a nice superhuman athletic feat. Oh, we're using the special ability. Which one? Um, just the, the nice superhuman athletic feat. Do I have to specify? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. Let me, uh, you're curfew dodger, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna look that up. Why did that come out like I'm gonna, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening in my brain. It just decided to go to that song. Here we go. Uh, all right. So let's look up your curfew dodger. Da, 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 da. Okay. So, oh, perfect. Athletic shadow. Okay. So that means when you push yourself to activate this ability, uh, you get, um, you, so pushing yourself is another mechanic and we get to finally look at that and I'll explain how that works. Um, you, what you're going to do is you're going to use, um, a stat of your choice, a skill of your choice, right? And you're going to burn one stress. So you'll mark one check in the stress box. And what that will do is give you, uh, either your choice plus one die so you can roll one extra die or plus one effect which means if you roll like a pure if you roll a two that two will be upgraded to a uh a four and five if you roll a four or five that'll be upgraded to a critical etc so what would you like to do i see so I can't just be like superhuman. I mean, you are being like kind of superhuman. You just got to burn a little bit of stress with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's do finesse. All right. Good choice. Somehow, athletically finesse that detritus. All right. Uh, do you want to increase the amount of die you roll or do you want to increase the effect? I'll increase the effect. All right. Awesome. So uh, when you're finessing this detritus, what you're doing is you are accelerating the leverage that Jimmy is creating through uh, the very smart assessing and you're finding ways to accelerate it. So that way you're getting it over faster. Um, Basically, it seems like you're you're almost superhumanly strong, but really what you're doing is finding that just perfect point where all of the weight is concentrated, so that way it's much easier to accelerate it. Um, so go ahead and roll. Rolled a five. Rolled a five, which means upgraded effect. You got that critical. In almost, you know, record time, that detritus is cleared. And just as you put the last desk, the last piece of wooden furniture... Who even has this much wooden furniture? As soon as you put that last piece down in front of that door, you look to your left. And there's the sound. Ellie got a six on shivers, by the way. Six on shivers? So, <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, what you're doing is you immediately intuited what everything, how everyone's working together. And you knew you needed to focus somehow on Melvin coming down the stairs. And as he hits the first pool ball, <laughs> what you do is it feels like something's on the side of your head slightly hot like the, the like half of your face is ex uh, in, it, almost escalating in temperature exponentially and all you see in your mind is a pool ball not letting go of his shoe it's just permanently stuck and he keeps rolling and you hold that image in your mind so instead of hearing 
you all of a sudden hear... And then a large crash down at the bottom of the basement. Oh, felony, 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 felony. <laughs> then Allie runs for the door. Did, did you just chant felony, felony, felony? Yes, she did. Grievous bodily harm. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Melvin is now on the floor, uh, behind, uh, Del, Jack, and Jimmy. And so what do you, what do the three of you do as Ellie books it? Is the Um, basement door now? It is clear. Like free? It is clear. It is clear. Yeah. Was I supposed to roll for the whole mess with thing? Uh, for the mess with thing, uh, what I, I went ahead and just said you did it really well. I just wanted to create some, a little tension with the rolling. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to be curious as per se, my character is supposed to be, um, mm-hmm. try the, apostrophe, apostrophe or apostrophe? Apostrophe? Um, uh, the special ability. I have no idea how to say it though. It's apostrophe. Um. You're curfew dodger, or are you, cur- no, you're a smooth talker, aren't you? Yeah, you are. So, apostrophe, this risky ability allows the smooth talker to speak to dead, supernatural, or absent beings, whether it is a spirit or something from the slanted world. This occurs regardless of how powerful, feral, or wild it might be. Social actions with, this, with such things are enhanced by plus one effect. So, who are you talking to? Are you talking to Melvin? Are you talking to the lady behind the door, or are you talking to something else? All right, let's go for something else. Okay, let's talk to something <laughs> else. Let's do that. Give me the option. Oh, I know. I know. I know. All right. So as you turn around and as you're hearing and you're tuning in to the forces that govern this space, you begin to hear the whispers again. And through the whispers, you don't hear Melvin. You don't hear whatever was behind that door. What you hear is instead a train whistle. And through that train whistle, you hear locusts update. And then all of a sudden, it's gone. Is the door at the top of the stairs locked or at the top? Of the, it's open. He came through. No, no. I mean, like, oh, the, the, the base, basement, the, yeah. the, the, the basement, backyard access. backyard access. Uh, it is. It is not locked. Allie's the fuck out of there. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'll meet y'all in the yard. <laughs> okay. Heck this house. All right, Jimmy, Jack, what do you do? You see Dell kind of trance out a little bit. In front of a bloody, very bloody Melvin. Come on, we gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> At least already out the door. Let's go. Yeah, okay. take. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Down okay. under the arm and get out of there. Okay, okay. So you all book it out. Also, yeah, Del? Before we get too far, um, Outside of the game, not Dell. Um, okay. I didn't catch what um, that was said in this whole uh, whispers, because, like, whispers. It's in the notes. But it was uh, okay. Locus Obtained. Locus Obtained. Okay, yeah. thank you. So. Not ominous at all. No, not at all. So, you all make it to the backyard. There, it's a pleasant looking backyard. The sun is shining. It's a, there, there you can hear birds sometimes. Uh, 
And I love what Chungus just said. So you got that going for you, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you uh, escape the house, you notice the backyard is indeed fenced in. Uh, and it looks like there's, it's, it's not one of those fences with a door or a gate. It's just fenced in, but it's a simple wooden fence. So it seems like it would make sense that the two of them are connected somehow, Melvin and uh, the scary door. Uh-huh. Uh, can Ellie roll shivers to sort of see if she can figure out like how? Like how they're connected? Sure. Apologies, I'm using digital dice today. It's a little more fiddly. That's okay. I I might just do digital dice forever. Okay. Because six. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um how are they connected? You feel a connection like, like blood running down walls, forming a painting. You feel a connection like sinew meets vein meets muscle meets bone. You feel a connection like she is somehow his battery. His fuel, his raison d'etre, his way of moving through the world. I mean, going with the, the prior motivating factor of hacking this man's whole life, it seems like getting rid of her. <laughs> okay. Where, so as you're emerging onto the backyard, where are all of you located? Can you, can you tell me what your character would do? It's a spacious backyard. It's about... 10 by 12 uh, square feet. Um, it is, there's a, a little bench. There's a patio area. There's a tree, and it's all fenced in. Where, where would you like to be located as you're escaping from that basement? You said it's a wooden fence, yeah. Away from the house, facing the fence, looking for a way over. Awesome. Yeah, you said it's a wooden fence, right? It's a wooden fence. It, um. Ellie's definitely going to need a boost to get out. Uh, so I'm assuming she would be looking for like a little like rock or something that she could use for that or like testing for loose boards. Okay. Awesome. Is, is the tree, is the tree near the fence and does it have branches that overhang the fence on the other side? It does. And it is. It is near the fence and it does have branches that overhang the other side. <laughs> Jack's going to try to climb the tree. Okay. Dell. Like, I want to know if there's any, is the fence up against, like, street access or public stuff um, instead of, like, jumping into somebody else's yard? So it is uh, on the uh, north side of it. Uh, there is the bank of the, uh, of the Clare Cook River. On the west side of it is a neighbor's yard. On the east side of it, is a sort of parking lot public access where you can see the rest of the uh, kids are kind of milling about and trying to figure out what they're going to do and still panicking. Okay. Let's go with follow Jack and see if we can jump the tree, even though. Okay. So... Ellie and Jimmy are working. I'm going to say you and Jimmy are work, working together to get over one side. We'll call it, uh, we'll call it the north side. Uh, so trying to get over the fence. And then Dell and Jack, I'm going to say you, you both are working together to climb the tree. As you're working, you hear inside it's almost like a shuddering like a <laughs> and a lot of banging and then suddenly you hear this again 
from the doorway, you see a bloody, somewhat mangled Melvin. His face is somewhat torn, almost like if you can see my camera, it's like his lip is fish hooked. His face is covered in scars. His once nice little bow tie is now completely messed up. And he looks at all of you and goes, You, you are part of the geometry now. I am so thankful. So if you all could roll me uh, something to get the hell out of there, go ahead and do so now. I'm rolling and assess. And I got a six. Damn. All right. Okay. Jack, what'd you do? I sneak my way up a tree. <laughs> yeah, actually, you can. It's blades in the dark. If we can, we can go. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> You're trying to remain unseen and just kind of slink your way like a jaguar. Yes, that is that is the goal. Get that jaguar blood pumping. <laughs> it's like tiger blood, but better. <laughs> Jaguar Jack. That's right. That's what they called you in, in gym class. The new Tiger King? Yeah. The old Tiger King. <laughs> uh, yeah, four. Okay. All right. Four. Four. So you slip a little bit because you got to tap into your Jaguar energy, right? But uh, you eventually get into a rhythm. Del, what you get? what you do? Um, can you remind me what uh, convenience is? Uh, convenience. Da, da 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 Convenience. Where is that? Well, now, now I'm. You've you've befuddled me <laughs> with the game that I wrote. Uh, are you talking about it? It's convince. Is it supposed to be convince? Um. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry, I was misreading. Okay. Cool. I'm like, wait, did I put a convenience skill in this game? <laughs> it would suit me. <laughs> Convince me to take you with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll let you think about that, Del. Um, what do you think, Ellie? What do you want to do? Well, one of two things. Uh huh. See, I rolled a four for destroy. See if I can find a weak spot in the fence to just sort of like kick. Okay. Or I can special ability it. It's up to you. If I kick through the fence, that gets Jack out too. It, it gets it gets pretty much. I mean, both of you, you you all have exit routes, and like you all are killing it. Let's do that. Okay. Cool. So. With Jimmy and Ellie. Jimmy uh, uses Assess to find the, again, the weak points in the fence to figure out where to apply force. You manage to find uh, a loose board um, that has been weathered away by the spray and rain of the uh, Claire Cook River, and you point it out to Ellie. Ellie, despite being a small looking, like almost looks like she's like seven years old, she just like goes to fucking town. She runs, sprints at that uh, weak point and manages to break down the board. Baseball slide, let's go. And uh, when you're, as you're uh, kicking through, you manage to, again, using finesse, uh, find the exact points you need to in order to tear away the rest of the board without getting a huge amount of splinters. Um. So, you both quickly make it out. Melvin, of course, is 
trying to tromp faster to the tree because that's closer. Nah. <laughs> and no. as as you're cl- clambering up, Del, what what did you want to roll here? Because this will change how things go. Uh, I don't know. This is tough because I'm tempted to try sneak and just follow um, Jack, but I am also. Yeah, let's just go for sneak. Okay. A little bit safer. All right, go ahead. Um, all right, I got a four. Got a four. So you both got fours and sneak. Okay. So. What you do is you press your body against the tree. And as you're clambering up and following Jack's path, Del, you are well, let's let's actually find out how this how this goes. I'm gonna have him also do something. Which will be secret. There we are. Melvin's secrets. Oh dear. Okay. Hmm. So, Del, you are snatched by the back of your shirt off the tree. No. And you see the bloody face of Melvin in front of yours. And he goes, Would you like to finish the tour? Now, what do you do? You're on the ground. You're not being pinned yet, but you are being held. Uh, huh. All right. Well, I guess go for whatever my strongest thing is and convince of that. So, okay. Roll for that. Yeah. Um, uh, and see if I can talk my way out of this. Okay. All right. So I am going to roll for convince. Mm-hmm. Also, you can burn stress in order to increase the amount of die you roll in case you, or increase the effect. Okay. I got five as my highest. Okay. Would you, would you like to burn some stress for that? I can increase it or I can... Yeah, you can either increase the die you roll, so you can roll one extra die, or you can increase the effect, which turns that five into a six. Okay, we'll go for increase the effect. Okay. Awesome. Turn! So, as he's leaning towards you, would you like to go on another tour? How would you like to convince him? Um... Can I convince him that, yes, I will want to, but he has to go back in and get into the house and leave us for a second somehow, like, and take his attention off of all the other kids? Okay. Okay. So, as you're talking about how, yes, you would like to go on the tour, he goes, yes, the lady likes the tours, and don't worry about Miss Flanagan. I've brought her on tour before. We we have such sights. And we are showing you them. I'll get it ready. And he goes and leaves a trail of blood behind. He's losing an incredible amount of blood, by the way. Um, Because... I mean, yeah, Melvin squeezes exactly. Because he's basically been perforated by a huge amount of broken glass. Look! <laughs> don't be a creeposaur. Maybe you won't get glass in your face. Good life advice, everyone. <laughs> I'm not sorry. You can't make me. So, uh, he he stumbles back in, slightly delirious, of course. And slowly as he stum- uh, stumbles back in, the whispers begin to fade. Now's your chance. Get out of there. Okay, run, 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 run. Yeah, run. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellie, Ellie, like, 
reaches through the fence like, Del! Del! <laughs> you don't have to climb! Del! Derp did. Right. <laughs> okay. Go, go for the easy, yeah. Go for the yeah. easy. No more climbing. Okay, so, uh, Jack, you are on the, um, the west side of the, uh, fence, and then the rest of you are by the banks of the clear cook. You all meet back up, and there's a lot of questions. Uh, as, as you're meeting back up, you see that there's a police car that is now parked in the uh, parking lot uh, because the uh, police car managed to notice there's a huge amount of, of junior high kids just panicking in a parking lot. <laughs> and uh, they're starting to uh, line up, ask questions, and that kind of thing. He never called an ambulance. He did not call an ambulance, correct. So what do you want to do? Do you want to stick around or do you want to try and sneak off? Always down to sneak. Yeah, they're going to be really tied up with Flanagan. Because um, she's not on the sidewalk, right? So she's still inside. She's still inside in the office. And uh, he's going to have to figure out some kind of explanation. Uh, probably. Maybe. We'll see. He knew Jack's name, or Jimmy's name. He did know Jimmy's name. He probably knows all of our names. If we go missing, that's going to look really suspicious. To whom? Huh? We're already suspicious to that guy. I, I don't care how suspicious he finds no, us. This is the cops. Did you to see his cops? face? Well, what do you think he's going to... What, tell the cops that we left a field trip? Who cares? That's a good point. But he knows our names, so if we suddenly, like, aren't with the rest of our class, we're going to have cops after us. And our parents are definitely going to get called. Mm. Jimmy, what do you think? Well, since I probably know which cop this is, I would really <laughs> rather not talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Wait, is it Jimmy's dad? We'll see. <laughs> I didn't know Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh no. So. Uh, how many cops are there? Uh, there's, it's just one squad car, so two cops right now. Wait, there's no ambulance. They haven't started talking to the kids yet. Correct. They're trying to get the kids to calm down right now. Miss Flanagan needs help. If we don't get her out of there, something bad's going to happen. He thought that Miss Flanagan had been on the tour. I think she brought us here on purpose. I think she knew it was going to happen. Or at the very least, he's not going to get rid of her. Can we wait and see if he comes out? Like, sort of stay to the back of the crowd? It's up to y'all. You can do anything you like. Let's just be on the opposite side of the bus. Okay. Yeah, can we position like ourselves here all along? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing can get me back inside that house. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can get you inside that house. Yeah. No, that 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 uh you all can position yourself behind the school bus as a way to cover. Yeah. Um that way if something goes weird, we can book it. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're not that far, I don't have the map in front of me, but we're not that far from, um, from like a wooded space, right, that we could hide in? Well, let me bring up the map, actually. That's a good point you just brought up. So, da 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 Because we can book it back to school and be like, field trip, what field trip? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 
So. Oh, wait, shoot. Is the timed thing still going on? Are we still in a timed something? Yes. You are still in a timed something. That is correct. Crap. Uh huh. <laughs> so there's Sora Point. Right. So you all are um, basically uh, near uh, York Crossing. Okay. So we could potentially position ourselves such that if we needed to, we could uh, hide out in the park. Yeah, you could go to Testament Park and Gardens. Yeah. And then from there, just go back to school. Park and Gardens. Very nice. Oh, yeah. No, it's very bougie over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ellie's going to uh, sort of hug sort of the back of the bus to see if Belvin is going to come outside. Um, and depending on what happens, she might book it for Testament Park. Okay. Jimmy, what do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards booking it. I've got happy feet. Happy feet. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, if somebody runs, at least probably gonna run. Okay. I'm gonna take down the map. So, as you're discussing it, and you're shuffling over to the back of the bus as, as, as a way to protect yourselves from, a uh, sort of cover, you hear... The, you, you hear the police officer bust open the front door of Solitude's arrest, breaking the lock. And it was locked. Mm hmm. Oh, good. I'll take things that aren't sus. For 200. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. And you hear the bark of Bryce Vale Police. Show yourself. Officer, what seems to be the... Oh my god! And then... Uh, suddenly, that sound happens again. And you hear... A few gunshots. And then suddenly it stops again. You then hear the distinct sound of radio noises. And you might hear the officer say something about needing a, needing a medic stat. What sound did we hear? The whispering. The whispering. Oh, the whispering. Yeah. Although I thought I heard she's here in it this time. That, that could, that, like, no, no, you, that you, could just be me. You, you did hear that. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so are you booking it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are, are the rest of you booking it? <laughs> I'm gone. Gone. With the group. Bye. <laughs> all right. So you're all booking it. You're all, uh, are you all heading to uh, Testament Park and Gardens? Safety sure. in numbers. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's safety in numbers. We're going to the park and gardens. And honestly, who the hell else is going to believe us? True. <laughs> True. So you're booking it to Testament Park and Gardens. Panicked. Confused. What is going on in this town? And you manage to find a, a, a place. It's almost like this bizarre paradox between what you just went through and what's around you. In Testament Park, it's utterly gorgeous. There's all kinds of flowers. There's roses. There's lilies. There's orchids. There's all sorts of flowers that really, frankly, shouldn't be in this climate. And yet they're thriving. And there's a fountain in the center. Uh, near the fountain, as you're all catching your breath, uh, there's a very comfy bench that's right there. And, uh, so and if you all want to take a breather and talk amongst yourselves, this might be a good opportun uh, opportunity to do it. Is everybody okay? No. Fine, okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you have all of your parts. Nobody's bleeding. 
Ellie's gonna quick okay. uh, study the area to make sure that we're not being observed. Uh, go ahead and roll me that shiver one more time. Shiver? Yeah. Okay. Observed. Yeah, I was like, observed by what? <laughs> Why are we being observed? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, six. You are being observed, but nothing by nothing malevolent, probably. Oh, probably. Love that for us. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. Decidedly not okay. Um. Miss Flanagan needs help. Um. And wh why did she take us there? What, what was that? What, what was he? What? Those are all good questions. Yes. Del, are you okay? I know he grabbed you. Yeah, no. Just need a minute. Your shirt is somewhat torn. He didn't break skin or anything, but your shirt somehow, it, it's a little odd because it, when you reach back and feel with your, with your hand, it feels like it's torn, but it's also corroded, like, some, like you spilled acid on it. Hmm. It looks like that too. There are singe marks around the uh, around where it, uh, Del was grabbed, and those singe marks seem to indicate they're like sweat marks, only worse, like the worst sweat marks or sweat stains that you've ever seen in your life. Del, do you have a different shirt with, with you? No. Or actually, wait. Um, can we get her alone? Yeah. I have a shirt. Yeah, I've got a spare shirt. It's fine. Nice. I was going to say, though, too, um, do I have access to, like, my um, inventory stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all have your backpack. Okay. Oh, never mind. Then Then I have a shirt because I have a whole, like, wardrobe stuff. Um, so I'll change into a sweatshirt. Okay. Sure. So as you're putting the sweatshirt on, catching your breath, you see a lanky kid. Uh, you're pre you're pretty sure he goes to your school. Probably you've seen you may have seen him in the hall. He's uh extremely pale, uh with a kind of almost slicked back, not oily like greaser slicked back, but like think Robert Smith hair and torn up jeans and a Danzig T-shirt. I've lived here my whole life. Would I know who he is? Oh, yeah, you know who he is. Who is he? He comes up, and he's like, Ellie? Do you remember me? It's Crosby. I think so. You all right? You all look like you saw something weird. You guys need some help? Um, I think the cops have it under control. Cops? Fuck that. I'm out. Yeah, they're, they're up by the old Rhodes place. The Rhodes place. Yeah, there's something weird going on, man. All right. And you guys, what is it? James? Is that right? Is that your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> it's Jimmy. It's okay. It's Jimmy. Yeah. All right. Whatever. And then Delilah and whatever. Jack, is that it? I don't know. Like, you got it right. Oh, nice. Wait for me, I guess. I know why we're not in school, but like, why aren't you, Crosby? Uh, it's because I have more important things to do. Like Th what? Things that aren't meant for people like you. You're too young. Don't worry about it. Too young? You're barely older than me. I'm older than you, and that's the whole point. I, you all came from that, what, like... Uh, the Rhodes Mansion, you said? Yeah. Did uh, you go on that field trip? No, I don't Since go. you're so much older than us. I didn't have to go on field trips. I go on my own field trips. Have he you thinks, ever been inside? 
He thinks he sounds very cool saying that. <laughs> he does not. He is, he is the opposite of cool. Do you ever go inside, Crosby? Uh, yeah. I'm inside. Okay, and was the Creeposaur, like, normal and then all of a sudden fucking Frankenstein? Creeposaur. Yeah, with Melvin or whatever. Melvin? The great, great, great grandson of the old lady. The sarcasm. I've never heard of him before. The sarcasm begins to be replaced by deep concern. Oh, Mel oh, and how about the old lady in the basement? Did you know about that, Parrish? With the weird face? The wiggly freaking mouse? Where, where they're supposed to be. <laughs> What? Uh, Melvin. Melvin Rhodes died 10 years ago. Well, he's up and walking around. Possibly messed up Mrs. Flanagan. Possibly some cops. I heard gunshots. I, uh, I have to go. What, um, what the hell's going no. on, Parrish? You know something. Can you ask him? Let me ask him. I want before he gets out. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead. All right. Um, I'll try the roll. Um, fluency. Uh, suck up and um, ask him. Uh, whatever he knows about Melvin. Okay. Sorry, right, I gotta get the dice too. Okay. Yes, the highest one I got was a six. Oh, all right. How do you want to go about yeah. this? Um, all right, let's see. Um, just be straightforward. Ask him what he's not telling us. Okay. Like, what are you not telling us? Look, I don't know y'all extremely well, but you're not the only ones doing this, okay? Like, we care about what's happening. All right. We want to keep people alive. And when Melvin was consumed 10 years ago, we, we were, look, all I'm telling you is just let us handle it. Okay. It's me. It's Gwen. It's Kelso. We know what we're doing. Y'all. Y'all in, are in way over your heads. I don't want you to get hurt. In over our heads? It was a field trip, Crosby. <sighs> she took our entire class in there. Yeah. I but she, she didn't did. come out. <laughs> she was talking about the, the moon, the tides, the fires, the dust, something like that when she was passed out on the floor. I have to go. And then immediately runs. He, however, is a sloppy runner. He's not very good at it. He's not athletic. And uh, he manages to leave the uh, little piece of paper. Looks to be cardstock on the ground. Well, this is interesting. You pick it up, Jimmy? Absolutely. You pick it up, and what you see on one side in typewriter font is the phrase, Welcome to the Locus, Little One. And then when you flip it over, all it shows is a clock with 13 hours instead of 12. And that is where I think we'll stop for tonight. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. <laughs> I haven't been I Facebook. I'm taking notes. I feel like Crosby is well equipped to deal with this. That sentence is a sentence I feel is going to pop up so many times. <laughs> yeah, but Quinn usually knows what she's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so how are all of you? How are you doing? Probably scared and pissed. Crosby's being an arrogant jerk like usual. Talkando, how about you? I want it. Well, well, I got out of there. I don't know what that was, but I got out of there. <coughs> yep. It's just the beginning. It's just a taste. Uh, Sycamore Lee, how about you? Oh, like me? Yeah, or like Tucker? you, the person, the person. Like, how are you? It was really fun. Okay. Um, this is my check-in. Really <laughs> um, wonderfully creepy. Oh, good. Thank you. Mystery, very intriguing. Oh, it's a mystery. Like maybe I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that. How about you, Jess? How you doing? Doing pretty good. I'm enjoying this like good. immensely. Good, good, good. Well, I have to say, y'all killed it. Y'all absolutely killed it. Um, I am thrilled we got to unlock the progress clock mechanic there are many different progress clocks uh some of them have four pieces some of them have six some of them have eight and they're great mm. and i think as we move forward we'll start getting into the hardcore like that we'll actually start like doing the experience thing because at the end of your entire you'll get the experience um and then we'll move forward and things will kind of pick up at a faster clip um also, just to let both groups know, since I know both groups are watching, uh, what happens in this game will affect their game, and what happens in their game will affect this game. So you will be perhaps helping or maybe hindering each other. We'll find out. So that will be fun. I'm going to be haunted by what might have been. That's correct. Which is to say... Jeffrey, what the hell was upstairs? Ah. Uh, yeah, and I still have the mailbox, so. It's true. Yeah, and I have that jewelry box. Yeah. And the black envelope. It's true. And uh, we could probably put that card in that envelope now that I think about it. You probably could. We should. We probably should. Also note that sometimes the time scales shift. Like this occurred. I'm going to bluntly state this because, again, this is tutorial. This occurred before Saturday's game. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh. With the party's consent, then Ellie's probably going to take that envelope and the card and stick it in the notebook. There you go. If that's all right with folks. It's up to y'all. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Unanimous or nothing. Are we in, did we decide are we in the same click? Is that what's happening? Different clicks, so, same hideout, I think was how it came Yeah, out. so the Thursday night gang will oh. have a, a different click than the other one, but you will both be sharing the same hideout. You'll be working toward common purpose. Okay. Yeah, so that, so the, purpose, so. the card goes in the notebook in the hideout. Yeah. Which... Okay. Uh, reminder, if you want to look on the Discord and decide on a click, y'all, as well as what your hideout is, that would be marvelous. So, with that, all that being said, thank you so much to all of the viewers. Thank you so much uh, to all of my players. You, I am blessed. I am fucking blessed to, and, and I don't like using that word, but you know what? No, I'm going to go full rhubarb. <laughs> I am Baja blessed. Bye. My players. Hashtag blessed. Y'all are great. Y'all are great. And I am super thrilled to have you. And I am excited to see what you do. And I really enjoyed tonight. And I think y'all killed it. So thank you for a deeply enjoyable experience. And I look forward to next week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're right. a sneaky, smooth talking group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And just wait until you get your crack shot. I'm so stoked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. He, he's not feel, he's feeling under the weather, so he wasn't able to make it to this one, but he'll make it to the next one. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. Anyway, I'll catch up with y'all. Love y'all. And I shall see you soon. And for those of you at home, never let the hours prey upon your regrets. And I'll see you 
on the other side. Take care.